it's almost impossible to recreate for you. Because this, this was our dream. Our first responsibility is to serve the community. seemed to rejoice the fact that we now had television. Television in the future will see many, many changes as it has in the past, from black and white to color. Good evening and thank you for joining us as we honor and remember the people and programs of KWTX over the past 50 years. So many wonderful people and programs have floated across Channel 10's airwaves over the years that we must say right up front, it is impossible to mention everyone who brought us to this day. Oh, but we would like to. <laughs> yes, we would. Our goal is to capture a few moments in history and share them with you, our viewers. After all, you are the reason we're here each day. That's right. The founders of KWTX Radio dreamed of bringing television to Central Texas long before it became a reality. Their foresight secured the frequency, Channel 10, for Waco. They also saw the value in creating the opportunity for the people of Waco to watch the first televised national political conventions before Central Texas had a television station. Buddy Bostic was general manager of KWTX Radio. The founders of KWTX Radio dreamed of bringing television to Central Texas long before it became a reality. Their foresight secured the frequency Channel 10 for Waco. They also saw the value in creating the opportunity for the people of Waco to watch the first televised national political conventions before Central Texas had a television station. Buddy Bostic was general manager of KWTX Radio. So I thought what a good idea it would be to set up television sets on the lawn of our newly located studios at Bosque Boulevard and bring this program in by cable and pay for it and uh, put up television sets and let the people come watch the conventions on a television set uh, on the lawn in front of the KWTX studios. Not only was it a big hit with the people of Waco, the event was also a success with the Federal Communications Commission when it came time to award the license for Channel 10. It made a tremendous exhibit at our hearing in Washington to show to the commission, look, this is what we did as a radio station and as a television station, we'll do more. KWTX TV went on the air April 3rd, 1955 as an independent station affiliated with any network that was so exciting it's uh, it's almost impossible to recreate for you because this this was our dream yeah everything was ad-lib almost it looked like it was ad-lib by the time we got finished but uh, we only had 17 employees in radio and television combined I pushed the first button that put us on the air, as a matter of fact. What was the mood like that day? What was the feeling? Was it exciting? Were people up for it? Yeah, it was exciting, yet it was kind of frightening. All of Waco seemed to rejoice the fact that we now had television. The, the only problem with it was that we, when, when we went on the air, we didn't have a network. 
KWTX had been promised a network affiliations, but Lyndon Johnson, then the U.S. Senator from Texas, managed to acquire the ABC and CBS affiliations for his proposed Waco TV station. We had to go on the air independent. And the reason we had to go on the air independent was politics came into play. And uh, our good friend, uh, Lyndon Johnson, uh, uh, how can I put it diplomatically? Um, said to the networks, you don't need KWTX, you need my station that I am just bought in Waco, a UHF station. So we went on the air independent and we were excited about it. Uh, we had the Home Folk Show and the Harley Berg Show and the uh, Uncle Elihu show, and we did the weather and local news, and uh, that was our focus throughout all of our programming. We wanted it to be programs that the local people would like and appreciate and accept. Later that year, KWTX and Senator Johnson reached an agreement. Lyndon Johnson ended up with 30% uh, of our company, but uh, the people at Waco then got all of the network programming. It was the difference in daylight and dark. All of a sudden, we had all of the programming that you could ask for. We had programming from both networks, CBS and ABC. Uh, and so we chose the programs that we wanted to carry from each network. So we had the best of all worlds at that time. We went from famine to feast. And those early network programs have become legendary in broadcast history. There was no foul language, wardrobe malfunctions, or blatant sexual content. It was family television intended to come into the living rooms of America. Many of those early programs live on in reruns, creating memories for new generations of viewers. This is Conrad Nagel suggesting you keep your eye on this eye, the CBS television network. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> There's a laugh. She thinks she's 14. <laughs> Look at me, I'm 13. <laughs> At your age, I really can't complain too much about you staying out later on weekends, but... Uh... Swell, Dad, then there's no problem, huh? Well... <laughs> yeah. A journey into a wondrous land whose boundaries are that of imagination. Your next stop, the Twilight Zone. This is Ralph Bellamy, the sign of exciting TV. There wouldn't be no harm if I... You'll do as I tell you. Now, you wouldn't want to interfere with your sister going out with her phone, now, would you? you... We do a program called 10 Acres. It's on Channel 10. We do it about dinner time every day, and we invite you to look in. We program to folks just like you. Television in the future. We'll see many, many changes as it has in the past. From the studios of Television City in Hollywood. Hi, I'm Alan Carter, and tonight is a very special night on BM Magazine. Tonight we're at the Waco Suspension Bridge alongside the Waco Christmas tree. CBS. What? I've been thinking about it, and I'm wondering, where's my sculpture? <laughs> what are you talking about? You want one of these? You mean a sign of affection from my mother? I don't know. What's that like? <laughs>
Man, I grew up watching a lot of those shows. Oh, yeah. Some of my favorites there. Starsky <laughs> and Hutch. You couldn't beat that. Jefferson's, mm -hmm. Laverne and Shirley, you name it. Lots of good it. programs on, on KWTX over the, over the years. But, hey, news is what we are at KWTX. And this fledgling independent station laid down the gauntlet for live television news coverage in its first year of operation. Live television coverage of a murder trial was unheard of in 1955, but innovation is an integral part of building a successful operation. And we broadcast the first murder trial ever televised in history. In the 54th District Court in Waco, a Judge Bartlett permitted us to televise a Washburn murder trial. And we televised it from beginning to the end. News organizations around the world picked up the story of this Waco television station providing gavel-to-gavel -gavel coverage of a murder trial. A studio camera and audio board were moved to the balcony of the courtroom. The testimony in the murder-for-hire trial was broadcast as it happened for KWTX viewers. The jury um, gave down the verdict of guilty for Mr. Washburn and sentenced him to death. And we interviewed him after the verdict and asked him what he thought about televising the trial. And he said, oh, I think that's wonderful. <laughs> it gave everybody an opportunity to see the jury system in, a, in action. Action has been the key to television success in covering major news events. Many landmark events were captured on film. First, it was black and white film like these pictures of the fire that destroyed the Elite Cafe at its downtown Waco location. News 10 was able to broadcast live pictures of the story in addition to film for later newscasts. News 10 film crews captured Elvis Presley during his tour of duty at Fort Hood. Elvis became a familiar sight around Central Texas while he was stationed on post. Black and white film became color film, then video cameras, and the magic of videotape. Pictures of the big stories create memories that leave an indelible impression, like the troops from Fort Hood returning to a hero's welcome after Gulf War I. It created compelling television as News 10 broadcast live from Fort Hood as the soldiers came home. The unforgettable horror in Killeen, when George Hennard drove his pickup truck into Luby's and opened fire. It was October 16, 1991. 23 people died and the seed was planted that spawned the law giving Texans the right to carry a concealed handgun. Sunday morning, February 28, 1993, KWTX news footage brought the world's attention to Central Texas when federal agents serving an arrest warrant were drawn into a gun battle with Branch Davidians on their compound near Waco. Four federal agents and six Branch Davidians were killed that day. The standoff lasted 51 days and ended in flames. No one who saw the pictures will ever forget the compound burning. More than 80 men, women, and children died in the flames of Mount Carmel that day, April 19, 1993. May 27, 1997, the small community of Gerald, along Interstate 35 between Salado and Austin, was hit by an F5 tornado. The pictures revealed damage too awful to be believed at first glance. Asphalt was ripped from the streets, bark from the trees, and homes from their foundations. 27 people died. Aggie spirits were shaken November 18, 1999, when the legendary bonfire prior to the Texas game collapsed, killing 12 students and injuring 27 more. The spirit of Aggie Land was never seen more clearly than on November 18 of last year, when the bonfire memorial was dedicated. The history of Aggie Bonfire is told along the walk to the ring that honors the 12 young men and women who died. Robert Sloan had been president of Baylor University for less than a year when he hosted the first dance ever held on the university campus. Baylor University was thrust into the headlines again in July of 2003 when the body of Patrick Dennehy was found in a rock quarry east of Waco. The basketball player had been shot to death. In the wake of the murder, scandal rocked the Baylor basketball program, forcing the resignations of head basketball coach Dave Bliss and Baylor athletic director Tom Stanton. Former Baylor basketball player Carlton Dotson was charged with the murder of Patrick Dennehy. He's awaiting trial. Fort Hood has become the largest military installation in the world. It is headquarters to the 3rd Armored Corps, two divisions, 13th COSCOM, and dozens of smaller units. 
By the end of this year, almost 50,000 soldiers will call Fort Hood home. Soldiers of the 4th Infantry Division captured Saddam Hussein, and 1st Cavalry Division troops fought in Baghdad, Fallujah, Taji, and Sadr City while they were rebuilding water treatment plants, sewer lines, and supervising the first democratic election in Iraqi history. The 43rd president of the United States focused the attention of the world on Central Texas as he brought world leaders to a Central Texas ranch. An invitation to President George W. Bush's ranch near Crawford has become the most sought-after ticket in world politics. The president and first lady rolled up their sleeves to help Habitat for Humanity build a house in downtown Waco. President and Mrs. Bush joined dozens of volunteers in raising the walls of a Habitat house for a Waco family. On August 13, 2002, President Bush brought his economic forum to Baylor University. It was a who's who of Fortune 500 leaders and the president's cabinet. Just over two weeks ago, President Bush hosted Mexican President Vicente Fox and Canadian Prime Minister Paul Martin for meetings called the North American Initiative. The three world leaders met at Baylor University, then joined President Bush at his ranch near Crawford for lunch. As in life, from human tragedy to history in the making, KWTX has been there to capture the human experience of life in Central Texas. Events across the world touch our lives. But when the President of the United States is your neighbor and the largest military installation in the world is in your backyard, every story really is a local story. We know big things happen right here in Central Texas, and you can count on News 10 to be there for you. Never doubt it. News 10 is the Central Texas news leader. And that, friends and neighbors, is a Texas fact. <laughs> a Texas fact That's indeed. Right. To believe all those stories happen right here in Central Texas. That's right. It is kind of hard to believe, and I've been here for most of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, the people of Central Texas have always welcomed Channel 10 into their homes. That has been especially true when we asked for your help for our neighbors in need. KWTX has partnered with numerous community agencies and groups over the years, calling attention to various needs in our community. You, our viewers, have responded with great generosity. The Jerry Lewis Labor Day Telethon will be on Channel 10 for the 35th consecutive year this Labor Day. Over the years, our generous viewers have raised millions of dollars to fund research and buy such things as wheelchairs and summer camp trips for Jerry's kids. Food for Families was created in 1990 by News 10 to help stock the shelves of food pantries across our viewing area. The first year, our viewers donated just over 84,000 pounds of food. The people of Central Texas really got behind Food for Families, and last year, over 1,100,000 pounds of food was given to the food pantries in our area. Food for Families is now the largest one-day food drive in Texas. And the project nearest and dearest to Rusty Garrett's heart, Toys for Tots, started on KWTX when Rusty was a mere lad. The first Toys for Tots drive was held in 1979. Now tens of thousands of toys fill the KWTX studios as our viewers play Santa to children who might not otherwise have a toy under the tree. When the local chapter of the American Cancer Society launched their first Cattle Barons Ball, News 10 joined the team. Your support has seen the event get bigger and better each year. KWTX provides public service announcements, community calendar mentions, and news interviews for hundreds of smaller community events throughout the year, and none of it would be possible without your generous support. Thank you, Central Texas. I've said it a hundred times, <laughs> Central Texans are by far the most generous people on earth. I, I, agree I really with you. honestly believe that. Well, live television has always had its interesting moments, and that was never more true than in the early days when almost everything was live. We'll relive some of those moments right after we check out a promo from the days when we were ABC.
television in the early days was primitive by today's standards. No teleprompter, no videotape, no digital servers. The programs, the commercials, and even the mistakes were live, like the time two new car commercials were scheduled back to back, but both cars wouldn't fit in the studio at the same time. They were uh, concerned about how they would get the next car in to do the commercial. And uh, when Frankel, our director at that time, said, push it out the back door. <laughs> and they pushed that brand new car out of the back door into the mud and got it out of the studio so they could get another new car in and do a commercial. Then there was the time Pepsi Cola was introducing a new vending machine that would dispense the product with the twist of a lever, and the local distributor was doing a live commercial. We had this commercial all set up, and they'd gone through it several times, and every time they'd put their quarter in, boy, a bottle of Pepsi had come out. And so we were ready to go on this one, of course, and we put the quarter in, and you know what happened. It didn't operate. <laughs> and so they had to hit it a little bit and it still didn't, <laughs> Pepsi Cola didn't come out. So they hit it a little bit harder and I don't think we ever got the, the Pepsi Cola out of it. The Marvel Russell show was on um, right after Johnny Watkins farm show. And uh, she would sit in the chair and interview certain people and so forth, guests that she had. And uh, somebody said, She's sitting on her mic. What? We can't hear anything. <laughs> so we had to stop and tell her to put her mic on. But that was so funny. Actually, many more things went right than wrong, and some memorable programs entertained children and adults alike. One of those was the locally produced Uncle Elihu show. He was the star for the children in Waco and surrounding areas. He uh, started doing that in radio at first, when we had a radio station. Then we brought it over to television. Wesley Val was the guitar player on the show in a cowboy outfit. Uncle Elihu was always dressed as a clown of some kind. All the students who were here, who were four and five and six year olds for the most part, would come up to the window and they would get a possum grin. That was it called. And they, he'd go over and nip at their fingers. And that was great. They had a possum grin on the Uncle Elihu show. Not all the programming originated from the studio. A remote unit was critical to those shows that were live on location, such as the Heart of Texas Fair. Well, our, it was a flatbed trailer. <laughs> and uh, we loaded everything on that. And uh, you'll notice uh, all the personnel there that came back from the fair. This was the first year of the fair that we had. The Cisco Kid was the star, and uh, Leo Carrillo was the sidekick, and so forth. I remember that real well. With the Heart of Texas Coliseum right across the street from the studio on Bosque Boulevard, many events were telecast live from there. President Eisenhower was, was president at that time, and he came to, uh, to the fair complex um, and we had all the Baylor students in their graduating robes and so forth uh, came to the, sat in the front part and then all the families were involved there. But anyhow, Adam McCall was the president of Baylor and he introduced Eisenhower. And he just said, ladies and gentlemen, the president. And that's all he said. <laughs> it was so funny at the time we flipped. <laughs> Well, one of the few people who was here when it all started is with us tonight. Wynn Frankel was senior director, but as you'll learn later in the program, he did a lot of things here at KWTX. Wynn, come on up and share some more of those KWTX memories from the early days. Wynn Frankel, everyone. <laughs> I can't stand the light. Oh, you can't stand the light. Yeah, right. Here, take this microphone right here, and it, it's your moment to shine. Talk a little bit about KWTI. You could even the have the podium days. if you'd like. We're going to step away. You want the real truth? Well, remember, we're on live TV. <laughs> well, it's very nice to have this opportunity to talk to most of my friends. It's been a long time since I've seen quite a few of you, but... Uh, 
it brought back a lot of memories. The whole thing brought back the memories. When we first started, I think uh, I started about two weeks before we went on the air. And we had to put everything together. We had to put the lights up in the, on the grid and whatever we had to do and get used to the uh, cameras, which we weren't familiar with and so forth. So it was a, just a wonderful opportunity for all of us to start this off. And uh, what we've done so far, it's been a great success. So I'm very proud of you. All of you did a great job. Thank, Thank you, you so man. much for being here today. And for all you've done for KWTX. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Right. Great to see you. Well, KWTX has always been a leader and innovator in the world of televised news. In the late 50s, KWTX pioneered the half-hour newscast as we know it. And before 1974, all news either had to be broadcast live or captured on film and processed at the station prior to broadcast. Then in 1974, KWTX acquired one of the first ENG, or electronic news gathering cameras, in the state. Stand by. We'll go in three, two, one. Fade up my cue. We have been innovators or innovators in the field because uh, we helped to pioneer uh, ENG equipment. We had it a year before a Dallas station had uh, electronic uh, journalism. The transition from lifeless black and white to living color created a new dimension for television. Uh, one of our big challenges was when do you go to color? Color cameras were pretty expensive then, and color equipment was pretty expensive. KWTX-TV installed state-of-the-art, color-capable electronics in 1962, when the new 1,080-foot tower was built near Lorena. 41 years later, what was once the tallest structure in Texas was brought down. The tower, no longer needed by KWTX-TV, was dismantled. The Lorena Tower had been made obsolete by the creation of the Tall Tower near Moody with its circular polarized antenna, allowing sharp, crystal clear pictures targeted to KWTX TV's viewers. In May 2001, KWTX TV again led the way for improved television viewing for Central Texans with the installation of a high definition digital television transmitter and antenna on the Moody Tower. Not only does high-definition digital television offer a widescreen cinematic experience, but it also packs five times more information into the screen than standard definition broadcasts. This means the viewer sees a crystal clear picture to go along with HDTV's CD quality sound. The last 50 years have seen many changes in television, and whatever the next 50 brings, KWTX-TV will always stay on the cutting edge as the broadcast leader serving Central Texas. And of course, the engine that supports commercial television is paid advertising. At least that's what Bob Bunch keeps reminding us. Well, here's a look at some uh, commercials that you may remember from the not-too-distant past. Have you been waiting for interest rates to go down to purchase your next car? Wait no longer. At Marsteller Motors, we have it. And Ron Hall together every morning on WACO. You remember Ron. He was a guy on television who used to say, And that's the news. Discover the freedom and security of your own portable cellular phone for only $29.95 from Discount Vacuum in Waco. That's right, only $29.95 for this brand new Technophone bag phone. Nice legs, Daryl. Didn't I see those in Jurassic Park? Oh, very funny, John. Folks, we're gearing up for MDA's first annual Cool and Cash. For 73 years, Hillcrest has taken pride in caring for generations of Baylor Bears. I'm Richard Scott, president of Hillcrest Baptist Medical Center. You have this working for you. Do you see these muscles? Are you worried now? I've beefed up for News Channel 10's Doppler radar. He actually did that on the air. I was kind of frightened when he did that, to be honest with you. He's, he's a beast and of a man. <laughs> if you say so, Gordon. <laughs>